Cool. All right, we're going in three, two, one. Here. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Disney Plus Pals. <laughs> you don't get to drum, Callum. I won't let you. <laughs> um, we're 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 going back to Marvel. I am joined by Jack of All Trades, Squid Jedi, and uh, this other dude. He's got a name, I guess. He's yeah. got a name, right, other guy? <laughs> Yeah, I, I exist. Yeah. His name is Kalel. <laughs> no, it's not. You're lying. <laughs> Kalel. Yeah, I, I, I love that. Just, just put me at Henry Savile. If you want to retire, just I'll, oh, I'll take your we're place. We're going DC instead of Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I think at least we're taking a break from Marvel if we do that. But then it wouldn't be the Disney Plus podcast <laughs> unless Warner Bros. was bought by Disney. Well, we're taking a uh, we're a taking decade. a break. We're taking a break from the MCU. Like, we're talking about something else. I think this still kind of counts. Okay, Neil, admit it. You wanted an excuse to talk about Hawkeye in anticipation for the Hawkeye movie, right? Actually, fun fact, I didn't pick this. Oh, you didn't? I, um... I was, like, just chatting up uh, in one of my streams talking about... Avengers or Smightiest Heroes, and you know, it was unrelated because we happened to be playing the Avengers video game. So, like, that's why we were talking about it. And then later, I was like, "Oh yeah, also I need something for Disney Plus pals. What should I pick?" And I mentioned my choices, which were um, I was thinking about picking Mulan, uh, Tangled, or I wanted to do Newsies again. I wanted. To to have another look at Newsies. What's Newsies? Uh, it's a musical with New York boys. Yeah, You're got missing out. Never heard of it. We should have done that instead, Neil. Wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I adore Newsies, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if I end up doing it. But uh, essentially, everyone was like, nah, you already did that. But if so you did I, I, hyped, I hyped up these episodes so much. Um that people actually requested them, and since I let my chat pick, like, I was at their mercy. I did guide them a little bit. Uh, I was specifically praising the whole show, and I realized I couldn't get enough of the episodes to show some of the characters' backstories and the main plot. So instead, I brought a couple together, which is going to be telling this story about Hulk and Hawkeye. <laughs> um... Which, by the way, they, my oh. chat, I was playing as Hawkeye at the time. They are feeding my addiction. <laughs> <laughs> they, if if I, I have a Hawkeye problem, my chat is enabling me. <laughs> because they really wanted me to do this. <laughs> Guys, stop getting Neil to smoke Hawkeye. Stop it. I, 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 I don't have a family a anymore. My grocery store. Or a, I sold my hat. I sold my cat. I sold my clothes. All I've got is this Hawkeye mask that I wear to cover my unmentionables. <laughs> <laughs> and I would gladly sell that to you if I could meet Jeremy Renner. <laughs> um. Yeah, but uh. Fun fact, the the reason I was selling these episodes is because this was actually my introduction to the character of Hawkeye. Oh, I had seen him in one or two things, but because of these episodes right here, this is like why I started following this character. And then with um, Matt Fraction's uh, comic book run that he did, which the Hawkeye show is going to be based on, that's when I started saying, okay, this is my favorite fictional character. I'm in. favorite fictional character. Ah. Yep, of all time. Wait a second. Avengers uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes came as a franchise from the MCU, right? No, no, no. This came yeah. out in no, 2000. No, this came out during the MCU. No, yeah, like a beginning. Like a beginning. Yeah. yeah. Fun fact, it actually like was constantly... Um, mocked by Disney. Like, Disney had a real problem with the fact that they weren't adapting more stuff from the MCU. Like, um, the show wanted to do its own thing. Yeah. 
which I feel like these episodes kind of display. And weirdly enough, it, I think the MCU stole from this show. <laughs> because you won't see it in this episode, but in episode one, the big threat is that a character named Graviton uh, lifts New York and is about to drop it down, has a giant... Oh, oh my... And that's what happened in Age of Ultron. There are char- like I knew some of the characters from this before I, they were in the MCU. Like I knew what the Adora Milaje was because of the show. Uh, I knew a bunch of Hulk stuff that has yet to help me, <laughs> but I'm hopefully it will eventually. Oh yeah, Zemo is a big part of the show. And I loved him in the show, but I grew up with this show. But well, I was growing up with the MCU. So Zemo actually show- has a cameo oh. in the second episode, yes, uh, in the third episode that we reviewed. Yes. So you're saying which that to clarify this- are which, what episodes have, are we covering today? We are covering. Uh, Callum, go ahead and finish your thought. Then I'll say the episodes. Uh, are you saying this show came out before the first Avengers movie? Yes. No. No, we did not. Uh, actually, came out. Wait, it came out. Wait, did it? This was airing between 2011 and 2012. This was... Or 2010 and 2012, sorry. Well, technically before, and then when it came out. And then a new show came I'm, out, which was in this good. Which I'm was pretty sure it came out after, but I'm not 100 on that. Um, I, I, I do know that for a time, this show and the MCU were running in tandem. It was a short time. The MCU has absolutely outlived this show. But that that doesn't change its impact on me. <laughs> this show was the start. So and, you saw Hawkeye in the MCU first before seeing the show, or? Well, here's the thing. I had always. You'll remember I made a reference to the fact that I liked Hawkeye because his costume was purple in one of our earlier episodes of something. <laughs> so Hawkeye was always on my radar because his costume was purple. <laughs> And I liked him in the MCU decently. But here is when I was like, okay, we're digging in. (laughs) I I like seeing this guy pop up. I like reading his stuff. I now see he's a great character. (laughs) I'm going for it. Feed me, Marvel. I remember watching this Uh, show a little bit when it was on as well. So I remember this was, for example, my introduction to Black Panther. I think I knew him from this and the Lego Marvel game before he showed up in the MCU. But I've not watched this since it was on after school growing up. So this was quite quite a throwback for me. Oh yeah, I, I adore this show. Um, fun fact, one of the first things I w- did with Disney Plus is I, I binged the whole series again. Because what I like about this show, and, and the MCU is getting there, but every time I'm like, Callum, <laughs> they haven't touched anything yet. The MCU you is only going to get bigger it's because i know this show (laughs) this show got huge it played with all the toys and honestly the mcu is taking notes from the show (laughs) like i think the only thing that's really different is the character of black widow because they they don't really focus on her a ton they mostly use her has as like um a thing for Hawkeye episodes. But also like she's Nick Fury's agent. She's not an Avenger herself. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so with that, uh we're gonna dig into these two episodes, which are Hulk versus the world three episodes. <laughs> I'm dumb numbers. Um Hulk versus the World. Uh Gamma World Part One and Gamma World Part too. And the reason I chose specifically these ones is they tell a little story. Um, Hulk going to the cube is set up here, and then what happens at the cube is delivered. However, what is not explained is the in-between, and I will explain that now. In-between Hulk versus the world, and actually, I'll explain it after we review the first episode. So just going into it real quick, what did you guys think about this one? Did you have any stuff you liked? What would you think going into 
Yes, I, I believe Callum, you haven't seen the show before, so let's start with you. Okay. <clears throat> now, I think all of us have grown up watching a show like this uh, growing up. Something akin to, uh, like, uh, Batman, or something like The Batman, or, you know, something that has that style of uh, aesthetics, and under the sort of a superhero um, theme. Yeah, obviously, people keep praising, like, the likes of, like, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, there's, I think there's, like, various Avengers shows, there's, like, a Guardians of the Galaxy show, I mean, it's uh, kind of a recent thing, as well as a thing from the 2000s, so somewhat nostalgic on a, on a, on a basic level. Um, so, this episode is about Bruce Banner running from the government, trying to find a cure for, or, well, I, I don't know if he is trying to find a cure, he says he's been get, given that up, so he's just he's being undercover. Trying to find a nice cup of coffee, because who doesn't want a nice cup of coffee? I don't, because I'm, a, I'm more of a tea person. So, um, uh, he's uh, hiding, and uh, and uh, he gets into this uh, coffee place, and he talks to this um, villain, and he, oh yeah, he was trying to uh, set free people with uh, the gamma radiation or something like that. Yeah, then... he was, um, essentially, I, I guess this is some background I can explain. There is a prison called the Cube, and what it is in the show is this prison is for Hulk villains like it is specifically for gamma radiated enemies so um I believe his name is Carl Krill um that's the absorbing man he broke out of the cube so Bruce Banner is like hey I need to learn about this thing because they're experimenting on these guys and S.H.I.E.L.D. wants to make like soldiers and I gotta stop that shit uh-huh. So uh, he meets this guy, and uh, you're seeing him. Um, I mean, I didn't know who Observer Man was, but I saw him interacting with the spoon earlier. I think, okay, what's he doing with the spoon? And then he um, kind of ticks Bruce off, and they he turns into the Hulk, and they get into a big fight. And those are some turn metal, and it's like, oh, okay. So he has the ability to absorb, uh, absorb materials. So apparently he's really into fighting the Hulk. They get into this big, epic fight. He's absorbing things, and then... Hulk throws these things, he has to find materials, he touches the sign. I thought, all right, very cool, he's doing that. Then the moment he starts, like, absorbing rocks, I'm a moron, that's... Metal is tougher, why did you give up your metal form? <laughs> then, my favorite one-liner... <laughs> I mean, I was watching this kind of seriously, but then Hulk said something which just made me laugh, and just kind of applause, like, best one-liner. <laughs> like, he turns rock, and then he just rips his arms off, because they're just rocks now. He said, ah, oh, what did you do that for? And the Hulk says, Hulk break rock, Einstein. <laughs> my, uh, my favorite wood lighter from Hulk, by the way, Hulk is one of the best parts of this entire show, um, actually comes later when he's fighting leader. But uh, how, did, how did all of us feel about what was going on with Hulk in this episode? Jack, you got any thoughts? <laughs> uh, specifically with Hulk and Banner. Um, so again, I've not watched this since, like, 2012 or something. So, the intro, the opening, is is a great, in, like, theme song. Because as soon as it started yeah. up and it got to the chorus, I was singing along. I haven't heard it, I've not watched it in years. But it's, <laughs> it's that well put together, that, that the chorus to that song's great. It's a very 2000s band, though. I looked up the guys that did it, and it's... When I say a 2000s boy band, it's exactly what you think of. Uh, but Banner... Again, so the episode starts with him on the run. And I really like this depiction of Banner. He's sort of he's still Dr. Banner, he's still the scientist and everything, and he is on the run here as he's going around with a baseball cap and a hoodie because that just screams incognito, you know. But Banner in this is sort of not nine o'clock shadow, he's skinny, he's a bit gangly, scruffy hair. I really like this depiction of Bruce Banner in this, and then he becomes the Hulk and he's Hulk. I'm not got too much to say on that side of it. I mean, he he is huge as Hulk. I love that. Um, I find a lot of shows and even the MCU kind of struggle with Hulk's skin color. They either make him too green or not green enough. Here we kind of went with too green, but I I like it better because the purple really accentuates him. I I also just love that like Bruce Banner is doing heroic work because like. With Ruffalo, I love his depiction where he's like holding back the monster within. He like 
kind of looks like he's like not acting at his full potential, but he's like intentionally being reserved because he can't get too emotional. This one I like because he's kind of accepted Hulk is a thing. And he's like, look, I can't cure him. I reached out to him. He wants to help. <laughs> Did you have any thoughts uh, about any of this uh, leading up, Squid? Um, about your comment, um, it's kind of nice that we get to see both the consciousness of Hulk and Bruce Banner because we don't get to see that in the MCU, but we get to see, you know, and we actually get to see more of Hulk in this show, you know, being, he can actually talk more, and, and especially in this episode, and because in the MCU before Thor Ragnarok, he couldn't talk too much. He only just said puny god, and then he didn't just talk too much. And, th and in Age of Ultron, he barely spoke at all, like, at all. He was just a big monster. But in Thor Ragnarok, we finally got him to actually, you know, have a conscience, you know. And I really enjoy that this show takes upon that Hulk is a person too, not just Bruce Banner. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. It's kind of like they started where Marvel had to build to Ragnarok. And I, I think that actually is an advantage of the show because like, uh, I, I don't know if I think Bruce Banner is better in this show than the MCU because spoiler alert, Bruce Banner is not in it much. It's mostly just Hulk. Um, but I think Hulk is great. I, I think he's one of the funniest characters. I think he has some of the best action scenes. It really makes you feel for this guy, especially when Absorbing Man uh, in this fight scene is like, oh, what? <laughs> you brought us out to the desert? What, what? Are you trying to stop people from getting hurt? They think you're a bigger monster than me, <laughs> idiot. Now I'm just going to kick your ass out here. <laughs> I just love shit like that of Hulk having a conscience, and he's not just a mindless monster. Um, But I'm moving forward um hulk keeps fighting absorbing man he turns into rock as callum said he gets defeated by the hulk but R thunderbolt ross shows up attacks hulk for a bit until he is ordered to stand down because two shield agents one of them wearing purple and being just the coolest of boys uh -huh. um <laughs> come down and fight the Hulk. Uh, Hulk gets captured, just to finish the synopsis, and the perspective of the episode shifts to Hawkeye, who they took a blood sample of Hulk, and he notices Black Widow went to get it. He's not sure what's going on. He follows her. Uh, he uses her password with a nice reference to the Red Room. Finds out she's working for Hydra, uh, intercepts the meeting, tries to stop her, but Natasha gets the one up on him. He takes the fall, and they think Hawkeye is the double agent. He is arrested and sent to prison. <laughs> and that is episode one, Hulk versus the world, featuring Hawkeye. <laughs> and by the world, we mean this one absorbing jerk, an army, and two Avengers. Well, basically, the absorbing guy is a part of the world. He can absorb anything of the world. Yeah, he absorbed rock. Hey, hey, hey that's a big rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I like. I don't want to gush too much because, like, this episode is very important to me. All of these episodes are. So I really want to get your guys' feedback before I share too much. Like, what did you think? What were your favorite parts? Did you have anything you didn't like? What did you think of episode one? Then uh, we'll go into ratings. I'll give a little synopsis of the in-between, and then we'll go into episodes two and three, which are two-parters, so maybe easier to, like, sort of diegetically get through. Um, let's start with, uh, let's start with Jack again. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, like I said, I really like, um, I like Bruce's character design specifically, and this was great. But no, the art style and direction and stuff in the show is really good. It's unique from most other shows when I think of, like, when I just loaded this up on Disney Plus and saw 
the team lineup. It's like this is my wasp. This is Janet Van Dyne. This is this is the wasp I think of, as opposed to as much as I love Evangeline Lilly in the MCU. This this is wasp to me. So I really like the look of this show and everything is great. Some of the moments, in like in terms of how it was animated, was really good. Hulk's transformations or throwing the arm back it goes on the arms, the muscles bulge out, and the shirt rips and everything. That was great. But the sequence does start off with you know just your still image of a DNA strand moving towards the oh. camera. So, so that'll balance out the animation budget for that little sequence. And if apparently that isn't something they do every episode, you know, if if he stays as Hulk for most of the show, that makes sense. Yeah, I believe. Um, I believe you can count on one hand how many episodes Bruce Banner is actually in. <laughs> okay. Um, that was good. Um, the Absorbing Man, not a character I am familiar with. Um, I, I am a little confused by his power set, but we'll, t- we'll touch on that <laughs> in part two in the next sort of two episodes. Uh, but I like the idea. Uh, the soundtrack to this show, again, I said the opening... Great. Love that. But then just in the actual episode, the little, I don't know what you'd call them, sort of guitar twangs or something. You just get these little musical punctuation points of like four notes just plucked away. And that threw me back. It's that, <laughs> the soundtrack for the show. I am 100% going to be rewatching this show now. I'm glad I had an excuse to start it again. Because <laughs> I this was, I get, I, it's not something I have tons of memories of, but just mm-hmm. watching him like, oh, I know that. I know this song. I know this. I know it. It's all in my brain somewhere, and this this is unlocking it. So I'm de- I enjoyed. <laughs> Thank you for picking this. Uh, I mean, no problem, dude. Any any excuse to talk about my dude. <laughs> mm. uh, uh, I like but, Ross but I'm, and I'm, the Hulk, the Hulkbusters, the sort of Dojo Boy Robo Tank hybrid mm-hmm. things. Uh, they look a bit flimsy, but evidently the U.S. government approved, so good for them. I have a question um, about this. If they're designed to fight specifically Hulk, how come they're so easy for Hulk to destroy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, if anyone has been watching Age of Sun, they'll take Oh, cool! Tony Stark cards the army to have Hulkbusters! Wait a minute, what are these pathetic little toys? Tony Stark making the army look like a bunch of toddlers building Lego. Trash, trash, trash. Ow, I got my bare foot well, stuck fun on Fun fact, Callum. The Hulk Busters came before the Hulk Buster armor. Right, right. <laughs> uh, um, they came first, and then Tony made an armor suit because they demanded that he needed to fight the Hulk. So he's like, okay, give me your materials, I'll make a Hulkbuster suit. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Jack. Um, I'm just looking through my notes. Um, absorbing that. The cube, as, as a prison. <laughs> the cube. I mean, I thought it was a little strange that they've designed it so it's... Let me grab it. <laughs> the corner so is it's, on... you know, standing on a corner. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, okay. and it, it works. Architecturally, you can do that. That that makes sense. I just think it'd be more intimidating as a prison to just have this massive iron concrete block just out in the middle of the desert, as opposed to hmm, mm-hmm. let's let's be artsy and put there. it put it on a point, you know. <laughs> There's we Minecraft don't... in that prison. Mm. Um, but what mm. what I always just thought is the cube was like the actual square, the the actual cube was like decoration. And the actual facility was underground. Yeah, I love, you know, I love it would be it really weird it. if they were in that thing. Uh, uh, another, I like that and Clint's sort of in, interactions here. And in fact, again, Natasha seems to be a bit more on the villainous side, perhaps in this show. So that'll be that'll be fun for me to revisit later down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really liked <laughs> Clint accessing his own shield database files and everything is oh password quick shot i thought oh, that's not that, that's not a very secure password that's, that's very on brand for you so then mm-hmm. when he's guessing natasha's like a spider hourglass he's just guessing things based on the black widow name because that's what he did <laughs> i thought that was quite fun and then he gets into 
Okay, something more personal. The Red Room. Okay, that's that's the password. Cool. I, I, I like the humor in the show as well, which I think is certainly going to be, and from, again, the next few episodes that we'll talk about, is definitely one of its strong suits. The funny moments do land. Speaking of the password, though, you guys want to hear something dumb? <laughs> so, speaking of Marvel and passwords, in that Avengers game that I was playing, th- this has little to do with this, except to, like, I guess justify Hawkeye's password ever so slightly. <laughs> because... In that game, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, needs to, like, figure out Tony Stark's password. And she starts just guessing random stuff like uh, Pepper Potts, the name of his arc, re- like his, uh, his suits. And then <laughs> she looks at a poster and she was like, wait a minute, Tony Stark's first love is himself. Tony oh Stark's password my. is I am Iron Man. <laughs> As if no one would guess that. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's the worst password I've ever heard in my life. That's the password I'd use for my luggage. But it's also that, very on brand for Tony Stark. So. At that yes. point, though, you shouldn't even like have a password. <laughs> How about I am Captain America? Uh, that would be <laughs> trippy. <laughs> that How would about... make me laugh my ass off. <laughs> My, about... my one negative that I wrote down for this first episode, it, oh, this is the personal thing. I think that Clint's speeder bike looks a bit goofy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but other than that, really enjoyed episode one. Yeah, well, uh, episode is... th- five is it? E- episode one of what we're covering. Episode five of the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, How the show's this? a little weird because episode one is the f- like formation of the Avengers, right? But then the surrounding episodes, episode, like, two through, I want to say, like, six or seven, are all about the origin stories of the Avengers. And this is the one for Hulk and Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. Um, You were saying, though, Cal? How about this for a password? Um, Fat Man Sucks. (laughs) That would have been harder to guess than I am Iron Man. (laughs) it enrages me. Also, Trickshot, weirdly enough, is actually a connection to Clint as well, because uh, this isn't in the show or anything, but that is a name his brother goes by in the circus. Uh-huh. Although it is also very easy to guess as a password. <laughs> Let's see, he's too tarot. Trickshot. Hey, I got it. Um... Squid, did you have any thoughts before we go um, into ratings of this specific about episode? This show and about well, I like that it's like colorful, like a comic book. And the show afterwards is very gray, actually. It's a bit colorless if you really think about it. It's kind of like, and it's trying to emulate the movies and trying to do that, but I feel like it kind of loses the essence of what made the last show great of trying to emulate the comics, you know? Wait, are you talking about Avengers Assemble, the show that came after yes. this? Yes, I am. Oh, um, yeah, I agree with you. I, I didn't really love that show. I think there's one good episode of it. But uh, what do you think of this one, like... Did you like like the story? Did you like the characters? How did you feel um, about Hawkeye? Because I guess we're kind of here to shine a light on him today. Yeah, I really did enjoy this version because this is my actually introduction to these new characters that I never even heard of before in the comics because I never read the comics like when I was a child. And it's like my first introduction to these characters like Zemo or the Crimson Dynamo or Enchantress or... Or even Red Skull. I didn't even heard of him. Well, actually, before, like, mm. the Captain America movie. Well, I'm, I'm wondering, like, in this specific episode, like, how, how did you feel about, like, Hulk's motivations and Black Widow's betrayal? Do you think these were good story beats? Well, the ha- Black Widow's a double agent. Of course, she's a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, so, of course, she would have a double agent lifestyle because she would always have to, you know, get her hands dirty and do stuff, you know, have even betraying her longtime friend in order to, like, you know, keep her cover. 
And also about Hulk, I kind of already said I did like him having a conscience of being a person. Because in the comics, when I read Infinity Gauntlet, it reminded me of him in the show being a person when he was talking to Wolverine. And I really wish that they kind of had a relationship with Wolverine in the show. Um, I'm, I'm with you. I would love to see other characters. I know you like Red Hulk, and he shows up in the show later. Yes. Um, but let's go into our ratings for the first episode. Um, again, we review shows a little bit differently. Uh, we, like, when it's episodes, we, of course, rate them one by one. Sort of like we did with WandaVision and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, but, you know... Don't, don't end the video because we're going into two other episodes now. <laughs> but um, let's let's start with Cal. What's your rating? Um, nine out of twelve. Wow. Of 12? <laughs> what, what, what is that out of ten? <laughs> no, sorry, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, that, that, I'm thinking off the way I rate my own sh- stuff on my channel. Sorry, I'll cut this out. No. Wait a minute. You <laughs> <wait> five- <laughs> I twelve. I was gonna say I'll, I'll take out a calculator anyway, but okay. <laughs> you should rate nine out of fifteen or twenty to make it even. No, no ten. <laughs> Ten's a fair number here. <laughs> um, um, uh, let's think for a moment. Seven point five out of ten or so. I mean, that's that's a fair rate. I'm just so confused by the twelve now. <laughs> Oh, I think people on my channel would have been used to that. I, I rate things by 12, because why not? It makes me stand out. <laughs> so, so like, okay, okay. 9 out of 12, 3 minus 12. So, so yeah, I guess if you, like, translate that, it would be, like, a, a 7. <laughs> yeah, pretty but much, yeah. Five is good rating. Uh, I, I'll Any final point. thoughts about the episode uh, before we go into other ratings? Hulk smash rock Einstein. That's why I'm giving it the bonus points, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bonus point five was for the Einstein joke. Yeah. Uh, I'll go next. I, I really like this episode. Um, I, I adore uh, Hulk in the show. I Like, I do have some problems with it here and there. Specifically, the Disney Plus version. And, and I had to judge... Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the the original Clone Wars series by the Disney Plus version. So that's what I'm doing with this show, too. You might notice any time there is a light effect, like Thor's lightning or a laser blast, the screen will darken. <laughs> um, I believe that is there to prevent, uh, you know, seizures and such. Oh, uh, right. yeah. All that photostrobia, you know, <laughs> that we see in... Like, remember in the, the Incredibles, like, they, for, actually, that was the first time they mm. became aware of that. Well, um, I, I think that, that like, um, instead of, like, like properly, like, working with it and, like, going, going easy with it and maybe making it look more natural as they cover that up, they just gray it <laughs> whenever, like, a laser happens and every time it takes me out of the show. It, <laughs> To go into that a little, that's very common in just TV broadcasting full stop. Uh, for anime and everything, My Hero Academia does it quite a lot as well. Just any any show where there's mm-hmm. suddenly a lot of white on screen. <laughs> where there is, again, Thor's Lightning is a good example here, but they do it a few times, even when it's just like a character flying back and you know action lines going by. I feel you. But weirdly enough, I usually don't notice it in stuff. And here Me I either. did. And like, for for me, I'm like, oh, well, I'm noticing this a lot more. Did they, like, do something wrong with it? <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of trying to judge it, not because of that. Like, that wasn't my only problem. But I also feel like there was a little bit of fast-pacedness. Like, they introduced the character of Doc Sampson super quick with, like, two dialogue things. <laughs> and there were one or two shots in the fight scene where you could tell it was kind of stilted and not that great. But I promise you, these are nitpicks. I just don't want to gush too much. This show is incredible, and this episode brings depths to the 
a Hulk that I don't think anyone really expected to see from the Avengers Muscle Man. The I muscle man. love this episode for multiple reasons. It introduced me to my favorite superhero. This episode has my heart, and I love the whole show. I'm going to give this episode an eight, though. I, while, while I really like this episode and it means a lot to me, I think critically there are better episodes. So because of that, I don't want to rate this one too high because, like, it's clearly not as good as the other two episodes that we are about to look at, even though I really like this one. And that's, that's kind of my views on it. I give it an eight. Uh, Squid, you want to give your rating and final thoughts? Oh, um, yeah. I don't have any final thoughts. I think I already said a lot about what I thought about it, but I'm just going to give my rating. I think, um, can I say 7.7? Um... We allow point fives, but but we say round up from there. <laughs> okay, then so I'll if, just if you're say seven point seven. I guess that would be an eight. Fine, I'll go with eight. Well, I, I, you know, if you don't want to give it an eight, it's okay. <laughs> no, hey, wait, I think that hey, maybe. Wait, wait a minute. Isn't seven closer to five than it is to ten? No, it's closer to 8. 7.7 is closer to 8 than it is to 6. Numbers. Yes. <laughs> numbers, numbers. Yeah. Sorry? Keep the fiends away. I mean, you could just go with a 7.5 if you're unsure. Okay, I'm just... Okay, my thoughts. 7.5, fine. Yep, that's what I'm going with. All right, Jack, any final thoughts or uh, sexy, sexy ratings? Ooh. Um, final thoughts, not really anything else I want to add. Um, said my piece. So I think I would give this episode, I'm going to say a six. It's quite good. I oh, do yeah. think perhaps, I, I think I'd like it. Just as a personal thing, I wish they'd spent more time with Banner and perhaps ended this episode at him being taken in. And then you do all the Black Widow and Hawkeye stuff in the next episode. Have, do, do that later. G give us more time on Banner. That might just be because I prefer the Hulk over Hawkeye and Black Widow. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's not like negatively affecting my thoughts on this episode. But yeah, you sex. Know, I, I am somewhat with you, though. I would have loved to see two separate episodes for these two stories like maybe have maybe have, have the the hulk ending uh be he like talks to clint and then like clint sees natasha and then the next episode is him following her <laughs> i i fully agree with you as it is though i i still enjoy it so the next two episodes we review are reviewing are episode 12 and 13 there is a couple things that happen in between these episodes that are ever so slightly important to know the plot. They're not super important. You can kind of figure it out, and I'm assuming you guys did. But just to be safe, I will provide those context clues. So in between these episodes, there is a big breakout of all of the supervillain prisons. This includes the Wrath, the Big House, and of course the Cube. Uh, during this breakout, both Hulk and Hawkeye escape, but instead of running, Hulk actually chooses to go help the Avengers fight a villain that's about to, like, destroy New York, and because of that, Hulk is actually pardoned and gets to join the Avengers. Hawkeye did not, so this episode actually opens with them tracking him down. So, I, I think giving a full-blown synopsis like just based on what happened with the first episode i think giving a full-blown synopsis is a little difficult when we're dealing with free things so let's just jump in we'll all help each other out we'll just try to go in order to the best of our abilities let's just talk about shit we liked in this <laughs> and Quick hopefully along we do. the way we'll cover the plot yes jack does Dr. Samson show up at all in these intervening episodes, or does he just suddenly show up here? Ass. He shows up during 
one of them, specifically the one where Hulk breaks out. And okay. what happens is, like, he essentially lets Hulk go. Bruce Banner gets some debris on him. Uh, um, Samson is exposed to radiation. He lifts up this one thing. And then Hulk carries him past that and puts him in that diner from the first episode and orders chicken soup. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we never see Hulk eat the chicken soup, though. Disappointing. Mm. Yeah, wasted opportunities. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's dig right in. So, anyway. what did we think? Whoever wants to go first can. Um, I'll go first. Squid will go first. Okay, so with Gamma World. I absolutely love that um, Hawkeye and Hulk had to face an entire world filled with gamma monsters. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I think that, like, the, the beginning episode, I like that Hulk isn't in the first episode at all. Like, I like that he's still gone, he's doing his own thing, and the Avengers have to fight all these Hulk villains, which... By the way, there are tons here. There's like uh, Zax, Abomination. Uh, I believe there's one called Vapor. <laughs> there's a couple people here I don't know. I believe one of those guys was a Scooby Doo villain. Yes, it's, it's Space Kook. I was a bit thrown off by that. <laughs> Wait, there's a Scooby Doo villain in this? No, it, it's, I'm just, it's a space I suit almost with a skull. Do. It's not actually him. <laughs> They would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those Marvel nerds. <laughs> and their meddling wasp. <laughs> That's another thing. Like, um, friggin', uh, Jack really liked this version of Wasp. Did you guys have any character that you thought was better in this show, uh, Callum? Um, that's a valid point because we have the MCU ingrained in our minds for so long. Hmm. Uh, um, I mean, obviously. I don't think it's really fair to compare them, uh, like, who's better than who, just because they're just they're very different, and that's something you just gotta uh, know, acknowledge with this depiction. They're, they're not any... I don't think they're any better or any worse, they're just different. Like, you, you just look yeah. at the Wasp, she's, she's got this cute little dress in this one, and then... But then in the MCU, she's got more of a, a skin suit on. Like, okay, that, that's that's different. Um, uh, uh, the Black Panther, um, Kingly, and uh, this version, uh, he's a uh, very silent type, which is often used for comedic purposes, which I liked in this version. Uh, Thor. Um, Thor was cool here, I must say. I mean, I love you, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, yeah, Thor, Thor was cool here, I must say. So uh, I don't know if there's anything much to say other than they're, they're different, and that's fine. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I do think Hawkeye is a bit better here than the MCU, but I'm also hoping that that will change. Uh, I also got to give it to um, Steve Rogers because like, you know, when we were talking about Isaiah Bradley, I was like, oh, Captain America means a lot to me. <laughs> like, I have a lot of rev reverence for Isaiah Bradley. This Captain America is the reason I respect that shield. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I love Chris Evans, but this guy was around way before him. <laughs> And well, before he hit his prime, in my opinion, and he's just great in the role. Like, they're honestly two very similar takes on the character, and I adore both. I, I really find that this version is the heart of the team, and isn't really the leader because him and Iron Man kind of switch roles, which is touched on in this episode. Mm -hmm. Jack, do you have any? Sweet, sweet notes for us. Uh, just also the first bit of this first episode. Um, I did like um, <laughs> the the little opening sequence was cool. Them tracking down Hawkeye, but him ultimately getting away. Um, and Shield calling calling on the Avengers to come and help oh. with this mission. Oh, yeah. The Avengers are this, this mm. other entity that exists, and they're called upon by the government by right. Shield. Got, at least, got like, away in the, in the most. BS way possible. They surround him. Then their own crew comes up with like a helicopter, like, hey, 
pay attention to us. Yes, every single one of you, including you, Black Panther, look up. Huh? Like Tom and Jerry, and then, oh no! Tackle Blue! Here's the thing. I fully agree with you. I think it is kind of BS that he just disappeared. However, I do challenge you, Callum. Let's say you were just doing something. Like, let's say you were following somebody. And then out of nowhere, a helicopter appeared above you. <laughs> and they're enough. specifically yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's Hawkeye, and I know he can get away with that. I mean, if he can get away from, like, people, like, looking up at a helicopter as a distraction, I mean, I can buy that. But the fact <laughs> that <laughs> no one... one's mightiest hero. No yeah. one well, that should show you how high, uh, mighty Hawkeye is. Mm, also, the fact that he saves everyone in episode two. <laughs> but uh, I digress. Yeah, it's total bullshit to push the plot. <laughs> so then, once they arrive at the perimeter of this perimeter around the cube and everything, I did like. <laughs> I'm sure it's meant to be a. Oh, what's up with this mysterious character? What's happened to him since last we saw? Um, I'm blanking on his name again. The scientist who's now. Doc Samson. Hair. Samson, that's it, yeah. That's but the but Cap, is, Cap is visibly confused by his green hair. I I get that's probably because, oh, something has changed. But to me, I like to think that, you know, just Cap is this man out of time and he's really unfamiliar with, like, hair dye. So here's the thing. You're partially right. Because while he was like, why does that man have green hair? And Doc Samson didn't have green hair before getting mutated. Cap never knew him. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I, I fully take that as Cap just being out of the loop. Cool. That, that's my headcanon here. Cap doesn't understand hair dye yet. He's got to learn that shit. Mm. Uh, but then they end up getting a rundown of, yep, yeah, here's the prison, here's what's going on, the leader's probably up to something, we need you guys to go in. Um, I, I, I assume you guys had to notice this as well. When they're talking about Abomination, and they have him like up on screen, and they have a picture of him, and they have some stats down the side... The stats say that his eye color is green, and he's visibly just got glowing yellow eyes. <laughs> there's, yep. there's a few little, like, flubs with the animation throughout these, well, this series as a whole. It's well, they TV could have budget, been talking but... about him pre-turning into the Abomination. Was he also bald pre-turning into the Abomination? I have no idea. The stats <laughs> can list him as having hair. None. It's okay. He does not show up in human form throughout the show. It could have been, been Tim Roth. Roth. Mm. It could have been Tim Roth. <laughs> Just a lot Tim of Roth kind, of, kind, kind of funny. That they're showing a picture of him on the screen and saying, hey, here's this information about him that is blatantly proven wrong by what we are showing you on screen. <sighs> but a little, that was there for, like I don't know, five seconds. But <laughs> I thought it was funny. Oh, me too. I, I saw the same thing, and I was like, I I specifically was looking at his height, and I was like, I don't know if that's his height. <laughs> I was also looking for, like, an Easter egg, because I thought they would, like, throw in, oh, this is the first time he encountered the Hulk, and they would, like, reference a comic or something. They didn't do that. <laughs> Aw, damn, damn, damn. They had an opportunity. Could have been Hulk eating soup all over again. But continue, Jack. Uh, so yeah, then the team are all prepped and give their radiation suits for going under the dome. I love, again, Thor being an Asgardian god, alien creature. Ah, th th doesn't need a suit. He he's fine. And Tony just mod modifies the Iron Man armor and says, like, okay, he's fine as well. I like that. If he's not already protected. Yeah. <laughs> I did think it was a little, it's like, okay, good, convenient. I'm glad we're showing this before going under the dome that <laughs> Janet suit shrinks with her as well. Good, because I was imagining, so, oh, this will be funny, they'll go in and start fighting and she'll just shrink and just be stuck under like the fabric. I have a question. <laughs> How do her wings get out of the suit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like in that it's one it's scene, custom made. It's a custom made suit that I, they modified there and then. <laughs> I don't think I would have noticed had she not turned around and showed her back. Like, I, I don't remember what she's doing. I I honestly thought she was going to say, like, oh, well, there's no holes for my wings, but then she didn't. I guess she was, like, looking at her butt or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's expected. 
design, darling. I, I, I designed all the superhero suits, darling. It does not have to include it. That is now my headcanon. Edna Mode made these suits. Mm. <laughs> They're not fabulous <laughs> enough, but it's her work. But I don't have any capes, so... The evidence oh. is there. Mm. Now, um, one, one question I've got left on this page from the first bit of this episode is they refer... I don't know if I was mishearing it or what, but they refer to the inmates, per se, the, the villains in the cube as UFOs or something? UFOs. They, sorry? Uh, UFOs. Okay, I, I was unfamiliar with this term. That threw me off. Yeah, I believe that's a Hulk villain team, although I gotta be real, some of the shit is too obscure for me. <laughs> like, I would have to go back and read, like, the oldest of oldest comics to find out some of the stuff. However, I wow, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it, dude, this is the inspiration for me to dig into comics. Anything here is kind of my limit. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't be surprised if characters like that do pop up in She-Hulk. Because, <laughs> like, the MCU has not been doing Hulk villains. And I feel like that's intentional. I feel like they're saving that. And I can only imagine... She-Hulk is going to be where they explode and do so many. I mean, for a while, well, there was uh, there's something I think Paramount owns partially some of the rights to using Hulk uh, movies. Or there was there Abomination is... once. Yes. So there, and there's the leader. Don't forget the leader. Some reason, but now down the line, now that Disney have absorbed more of <laughs> the Marvel property rights back again, I'm sure once probably... <sighs> Mid phase three, they had the idea for She Hulk. We're like, okay, cool, let's start stocking up for this. I mean, I like how Hulk is going to be in that, and it's basically going to be a both of them show. But I, I can't wait to see some of these characters. Maybe we can learn more about Space Kook guy. Mm. <laughs> he looked cool. <laughs> I'm wondering what his story is. I, I know some of these characters. I know Zax. Um, he's the big electric dude. Uh, that also, a very Scooby-Doo villain-looking character. <laughs> yeah, Hulk villain. Um, did you, did you see the ghosts. guy with a galaxy on his body? Oh, oh, oh no, that's, that's Alien X from Van 10. Come on. Yeah. No. <laughs> that looks exactly like Alien X. <laughs> I believe it's Okay, we're, we're getting sidetracked. We're getting sidetracked. <laughs> really? Yeah. What happened next in the episode? Um. Well, they're exploring the cube. Meanwhile, this is cut in between with... Hawkeye finally tracking down Black Widow. And essentially, like, we learn more about what Hydra's wanting to do with the blood, the Hulk's blood. It's a direct continuation of the last episode. Hawkeye goes batshit crazy. <laughs> he blows up several mechs using nothing but arrows, takes out on, she on Hydra all by himself, and captures Black Widow using nothing but arrows. Sounds like a convoluted story that actually went well. Sounds very, very cool, if you ask me. But <laughs> I love like, that it's convoluted and it works so well. I, I like the idea that, like, you know, he can handle himself with just physical prowess and a bow to the point where, like, he is celebrated as the powerless Avenger. He's the guy who doesn't have superpowers, yet he's saving the world constantly. The muggle. <laughs> he's technically a muggle. Well, then by that argument, Tony Stark is like a, a fake wizard? Like a, a Mysterio charlatan wizard? <laughs> it doesn't he's matter. He's a street magician. <laughs> hey. He's a tech oh, wizard. Oh, a tech oh, wizard, oh, that's it, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's Hawkeye's going on. Um, did we have anything, any ideas with that before we talk about what's happening with the Avengers? Like, honestly, I love this scene. <laughs> it is just the best of chances to show you that this character is cool. Because let's be honest, they kind of had to. <laughs> when you're on a team with Iron Man, uh, the Hulk, and Thor, you need to prove that you are worthy. And I think these episodes kind of did a good job of showing that Clint is an equal match for them. Like, literally, when Wasp is like, yo, he has no powers, and he's out running Black Panther and Captain America. 
I, I liked that stuff. I liked hearing that this guy without abilities could still rival the full team of the Avengers all by himself. He was cunning. He took out down Hydra by himself. Not fully, but, you know, <laughs> he took out a bunch of robots. Yeah. And he beat Black Widow. He took her in, and he's going to reach out to the Avengers because he doesn't trust S.H.I.E.L.D. I thought and everything with him was stupendous. <laughs> what was that? And it all came from circus um, training. Yeah. He was originally a circus boy. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. Note to self. If I want to become a superhero, join the circus. Right. Mm. Well, he was specifically a carny, so you had to join the traveling circus. I mean, Dick Grayson, there's, there's, a, there's a fair history of superheroes in the circus. That's... <laughs> it, it, well, it, yeah, it, but no, that fight scene was really good that we keep cutting back to at that Hydra warehouse. I really Ooh. liked once things start catching on fire, then they switch up the color, they make the shadows much harsher, you have the embers in the air and everything. It, it, it becomes a little bit more stylized when we cut back to that. That was a nice choice. Oh, yeah, and did anyone else have this moment where um, Natasha goes, you can't take me to S.H.I.E.L.D., you'll be arrested. And then Clint says, I'm not taking you to S.H.I.E.L.D., and then he pulls out a knife. <laughs> did anyone else have that thought? <laughs> I had that thought. <laughs> he's holding a knife, and he's just like, I'm not taking you to S.H.I.E.L.D., Natasha. <laughs> But no, he cuts her loose, and he's like, I'm taking you to the Avengers. Well, eh, kid's show, but still good one. I'm just yeah. saying, people die in this show. People die. I, I know, people die, I know, but I really wish this was, you know, more mature. I mean, what, to be fair, what motivation would Hawkeye have to kill Black Widow, other than the fact that she's a Hydra agent for some reason? Well, fun fact. She's a Hydra I agent. <laughs> after yeah. well she betrayed his trust she betrayed his friendship yeah, and after uh, this episode he does actually get a chance to go after uh black widow and he doesn't kill her but he thinks about it <laughs> also Honestly, uh, he was hurt that's that's kind of the beginning middle of end of it he felt betrayed and was hurt yeah all right true uh black widow also seems to be the pick going for the uh, BBC sitcom Allo Allo approach of speaking languages by using different accents for different languages. Yeah, when she's your friend, she uses your accent, which mm. is you... not trustworthy. <laughs> I didn't know she's had a Scottish accent. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I think this is something the MCU also pulled. But not with her. MCU kind of did this with Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Yeah, I know oh, yeah. There's, some, there's like some throwaway dialogue in one of the movies where it's mentioned that Black Widow taught uh, Wanda how to change her voice like that. Like it's a skill that Black Widow picked what? up as a super spy. Yeah, it makes sense. Yes. But, you know, it's mostly just because the actress wanted to change the voice. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Scar Black Widow even had uh, a... A Russian voice from the beginning. She in the MCU. Yeah, in the MCU. Well, yeah, the first no, time she... we met her, she was working for Shield undercover as Tony's secretary. So I don't Is think she it would have been accent in Black Widow. I wouldn't be surprised if we see her speak Russian in Black Widow. I don't know if she'll have the accent. She could though. Weird. If we I see flashbacks, of... maybe. Well, Going by Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes logic, I am technically speaking Russian now, and people are not meant to understand me. I immediately distrust everything you just said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a bad person. <laughs> I'm scared <laughs> now. You are now a Bond villain! If American media has taught me anything, Russians cannot be trusted. <laughs> yeah, gonna... it's like... <laughs> why are we always the villain? I'm gonna turn my head, and you're gonna have red hair and be shooting me in the back with lightning. I don't trust you. Trust me. I have puppy on my lap. <laughs> Why do you have a dog? What are you going to do with that dog? Um, I'm moving this forward. Mm. No. 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 You're scary. Yeah, so then... 
Yeah, moving forward. Um, back to what's happening at the cube. Um, we see the Avengers get all gammaized a little bit. Well, some of them, specifically Wasp. Uh, Zax comes in while they're looking for the leader, tears up the suit. A lot of the Avengers have to, like, sort of sacrifice themselves. That way Samson can get to the generator. Uh, but it's not even him who shuts it down. It's Black Widow who directly ignored Iron Man's plans. Panther. Black oh, Panther. Black Panther, my bad. <laughs> and saved the day. W- what did we think about Wasp in these scenes? And also, like, you know, the theme of Tony not being the best leader <laughs> sort of carries throughout the show until an episode where he actually passes that torch to Captain America. Um, I have another question to ask that kind of leads to this. Um, who ripped off the other first? Does the gamma radiation rip off the ooze from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or does the ooze from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles rip off the gamma radiation? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was after Hulk. In no. that case, the not ooze this. Ripped off, the <laughs> ooze ripped off gamma radiation. Well, specifically this episode came long after. I I almost promise you in the comics they played with this idea. But I, I'm with you. These do kind of have like Ninja Turtle mutant-esque designs. Like, specifically with Wasp. Like, I thought it was a little on the nose that Wasp turned into a bug. Black they Panther. They knew that was Black Wasp. Panther, yeah. They're Iron Man, genetic like, an- animal ancestors. ancestors. <laughs> Hmm. With Black no, Panther, that's kind of true. I suppose, There's actually, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Jack? Yeah, the, the Wasp transformation, that was surprisingly... surprisingly graphic. That was... <laughs> so oh, yeah. the mandibles the... come out from her actual, like, human mouth, and the, the skin on the face is pushed back to make space for her. I'm like, oh, that... Oh! <laughs> the fact that her actual costume is ripped... And, like, you can barely tell the difference between it and her skin now. <laughs> kind of screwed with me. I was like, ah. oh. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, God, she's become a beast. <laughs> well, of course, I... we're, we're children friendly. Uh, Hulk keeps his pants on. Everyone, everyone maintains their modesty and irradiated you gotta, form, you know. You gotta understand that the Grandmaster from Ragnarok did this before Wasp made it cool, okay? <laughs> Uh, he uh, turned into uh, a bug? Uh, yeah, he uh, turned into a, uh, a bug. Oh, the fly. You're referencing the fly. <laughs> I see what you're doing. You clever bean. And now that we have explained the joke, it has lost its humor. It is dead. It's not funny now. Yeah, it's uh, not funny anymore. Moment of silence for the joke. <laughs> mm. oh, I, forward, I, I loved these scenes. I love specifically like in the moment Iron Man does kind of make the right play like he's like no go you, you're the only hope you go with Thor who can't be affected by this shit you wouldn't do everything and Samson does not succeed but luckily Panther does <laughs> and at the uh, end oh yeah Jeff it was something very subtle uh, I love how when oh, Black I Panther I lo- yeah I love when Black Panther crushed the machine uh, he briefly got exposed. We briefly see okay. sharp teeth. And I would have mm. loved it, like, if they turned into monsters, you would have had the audience curious, like, oh, man, what would have happened if he turned into a monster? Whoa! Um, next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next time. <laughs> well, the good thing is yeah, these episodes were premiered the same night. Mm. Uh, the bad news is they took, like, a season break after these episodes. Yeah. Uh, it feels like sort of a mid-season finale point. It, I mean, it's a great ending. <laughs> sort of like, hey, look, look at this shit. <laughs> but um, towards the end of the episode, it is revealed that the leader uh, um, planned for all of this to happen, and that was just a test. And now in Las Vegas, he reveals the real one. And Gamma World Part 2 begins. So what, oh, what do we think of the, the begins. What do we think about the first episode of this part real fast? 
Let's give our ratings. <laughs> uh, Cal, let's start with you. I think I'm willing to give this uh, um, Mm, I, I probably would have given this an eight for an eight out of ten, but the, the BS way that Hawkeye got away. Seven point one. <laughs> That's a nitpick, Cal. Yeah, I know it's a nitpick. <laughs> I mean, All right. But... So what did you give it? it? <laughs> um, uh, this is. Uh, so, uh, a bit of pressure to deal with the gamma radiation. You, um, fair fight between all sides. You think the heroes have the upper hand, but the villains try to stop them. And just when you think the heroes are one, boom, the villains have got this big battle all along. Uh oh, this is going to build a lot of pressure. Obviously, this is building up to uh, a, a two parter. Um, and uh, I probably would have been benefited from watching the whole show in, in order because maybe the structure could have been a bit a better paced on their own right. But Still an engaging episode, nonetheless. So, number? Um, uh, thinking about the fight, thinking about the graphic. Um, mm, I'm torn between 7.5 and 8. Mm. Out of 10 or 12? Well, last episode... <laughs> <laughs> you gave the previous episode 7.5. So, do you think it was on par with it? Do you think it was better than it? I'd That's probably say... Good. On par, seven point five. I'd say. I'd say. Right. Um, I, I'm actually going to give this one an eight point five. Um, I really like this episode. I I think it was great. It had a lot of focus on um, specifically like I, I liked the little bits of Black Panther we got, like interacting with the team. I think the thing that this show carries that the MCU also like sort of revels in is the best thing about it is the characters interacting. So, like... Ah, yes! Friggin' Wasp getting, like, scared when she hears T'Challa talk because he hasn't talked in a very long time is cute. Um, seeing Thor, like, have to, like, look in the face of, like, mortals and be like, ah, I don't need this suit. And just the little things, like Cap, like, not understanding green hair. It's great. Even the sentence of leader's lead and making Iron Man go first, it, it's wonderful. I, I adore the little moments. I and, and of course, Hawkeye. I don't even need to say Hawkeye. He was cool. <laughs> Do you what even need to explain Go why? into your rating after you say this, by the way. Squid. Um, oh, yes. Um, about the, about the um, interactions... I, I really do enjoy them, and I it was a missed opportunity in Endgame. Maybe they'll have a big interaction goldmine in the future, but I really did enjoy this episode, and I did enjoy the, you know, genetic an animal ancestors in, in about... Um, why didn't... What does that have to do with Hulk and the leader? Why don't they have genetic animal ancestors either? Because they got it's gamma radiation that's mutating them. It's random. No, it's gamma, gamma radiation. Yeah, Hulk's already mutated. I know, I know, but like, th so aren't they like the same thing? Yeah, okay. it, it's comic books. It does what it, it does whatever the writer wants it to. I know. Yeah, Hulk's, Hulk's here, already... Here's this mysterious radiation that you know. At the time of recording, we basically fully understand it. Of course, it doesn't do anything like this. But at the time, ooh, nuclear powers! Whoa! <laughs> and I can, I can whip up a cure to it here in this hut, even though I've already established I haven't been Bruce Banner for a really long time, and you have no idea how I set up this hut. <laughs> and now let's stick it into your quiver for you to use with your bow and arrows that can be remotely activated and... <laughs> that's next that episode. Kind of that's... So Hawkeye's got trick arrows. Okay. Yeah. Punch. What What is your rating? Uh, my rating is. Oh, oh, sorry, eight. Squid. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but my rating is eight again. My rating. I I agree with you. I I feel like this is, if not better than the first episode, then at least on par. Yeah. 
Jack, how about you, my friend? Uh, I'd, I'd give this episode a seven. I, I think it was better than the previous one. I think it was more fun, again, because now we have more of the Avengers, more of the cast, so we get all those interactions and everything, which were good fun. Uh, Samson is a character I am not familiar with in the slightest, <laughs> so it's cool to have seen him, and I have questions now, I want to look more into this character, but it was fun. It's like, oh, he has knowledge of this facility, so it's sort of an escort mission, like you said, of the characters almost sacrificing themselves to get gain that extra footing and get him closer to where we need him to be. That was fun. That was nice. The leader and his whole mm-hmm. plot get into that next episode, but the Hawkeye uh, B story, I suppose, is not, not like a subplot or anything. It's just parallel events going on. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it a side fun. thing. I, I really liked it. I really like... Um, <laughs> I understand why they're not perhaps doing it in the MCU yet. Hawkeye with arrows that explode and freeze something, or fire, or acids, or radiation-proof serum sort of stuff. Arrows. But I, re- I really like all the, the trick arrows and stuff that he uses throughout this. Hawkeye is a lot of fun here. I agree that That's this does show why he is a, ne- like a, a member of the team. He's on par with everyone else. Mm. But I don't think that in the MCU... And I know you don't need to compare it, but I just want to mention this, that mm. Hawkeye is an integral part of that team, as was expressed in Age of Ultron. He's what keeps everyone grounded, and he can handle himself. Whereas here, I think, he doesn't necessarily keep everyone grounded, but he's very capable of handling himself. So it, it, it balances yeah. out. He is very capable. I, I agree. I love the shot where he, like... <laughs> like, I can't remember what the first one was. I think it was, like, two explosions to Hulk's face. And then he, like, freezes him? Mm. That was great. This guy's cool, man. You were saying something, uh, Cal, I think you were making a joke about Eras. Yeah, um, you were saying just the ultimate upgrade, like, arrows that shoot lasers, arrows that shoot sharks with frickin' lasers on their heads, arrows that shoot, like, I don't know, Kami, Oz, Arrows that shoot Goku's, arrows that shoot uh, washing tablets, arrows that shoot... Did you just say shoot... an arrow that shoots a Goku? <laughs> uh, that shoots an infinity gauntlet, an arrow that shoots flowers, arrows arrow that, that shoots stands. Arrows <laughs> that shoot an anti-life equation? Um, <laughs> it's just I on do a piece believe... of paper tied to the end of the arrow. I do believe there is an arrow. I know he's got a boomerang arrow. Okay. Um, I think my favorite arrow, I, I believe it is called the Barrage Arrow. It is an arrow with pin tech that actually has tiny arrows inside of it that once fired into the air will grow to the normal size of arrows as if an entire army just fired at you. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> that is my oh. favorite Hawkeye arrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Um... But moving on to the next episode, yes, it was all a trap that everybody gets turned into freaking creepy-ass Gamma Hulk versions. I think the best one is probably Tony. I think the worst one is probably Cap, because he's just, like, bigger him. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, yeah, everybody's getting mutated left and right. Someone's got to find the Hulk. And if that means that good old Clint Barton Hawkeye has to sacrifice his personal mission to go save the day, that's what he'll do. So what would what do we think of this episode? Let's start with eh. Who have we started with? Me. I think I was <laughs> We haven't started with me. Um I I think one of my favorite parts of this episode is I I wanted to bring up something closer to the beginning, but I think my favorite part is just the interaction between Hulk and Clint, where yeah. Hulk refuses to turn into Banner, and Hawkeye goes, listen here, you big green asshole! <laughs> You're gonna turn into Bruce Banner right now, or I'm taking you down! And Hulk laughs so hard he turns back into Banner. 
Which, by the way, you can notice that in the background, Clint is smiling the entire time. He knew that would happen. (laughs) (laughs) I I do really like the Clint and Banner, or Clint and Hulk, relationship set up in this episode. I assume we would have got more of it in the Prison Break episode in between. But no, that, that's a fun dynamic. I, I, I like the two of them being sort of buddy buddy rivals. Fun. They argue over pizza in an episode, which just makes me so happy. <laughs> they they do end up becoming like best friends. If Attack on Titan has taught me anything, the best moments are when there's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's pizza in Attack on Titan? <laughs> move on, move on. Don't 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 don't, don't dig into what I just said. You go. <laughs> Is that evil pizza? Something? All right. Uh... Um, but yeah, towards the beginning of the episode, Iron Man's gamma design was so gory. Like, what even was that? His like arc reactor gets all veiny, and it like pushes out of his chest. He looked like a zombie. <laughs> I, I also specifically want to ask the question, how did we feel about the leader? Because he was short, he had a big stupid head, <laughs> and he he honestly looks kind of silly, and yet I found myself very intimidated by this character. The voice was mm, top-notch, very intimidating. Every word he spoke was, I know what's going to happen, and I'm ready for it. I, I recognize his voice. Oh, really? What else is he in? Yep. Um, he's from either Transformers Prime or from the DC show Justice League as the question in Ratchet. I, I believe he is also in... This is going to be a poll. But uh, he's in a very old point-and-click adventure game called uh, I Have No Mouth, But I Must Scream. <laughs> what? Oh, yes. Yeah. And... And uh, he plays this computer, which is essentially an all-powerful god, which, like, you know, obviously has some comparisons to this character. I wouldn't be surprised if that role maybe got him this role. Um, but what do we think of the leader? I think he's cool, definitely. You know, I, I mastermind, you know. Did you think his head... Looked like a pickle. Um, no, but I do think it's pretty massive, but not oversized the size of the roof. I thought it looked like a pickle. And at the (laughs) end, I thought it looked like a Brussels sprout. (laughs) That is all I have to add. (laughs) Or broccoli. Or, Or an avocado. Avocado might win. <laughs> but, Cal, what what did you think about Avocado Man? <laughs> yeah. His, um, he, he had an avocado head. But when he was defeated, he had a squished avocado head. Um, uh, this villain That's seems... Like, hey, Becamole! <laughs> um, yeah, he seems quite a uh, uh, cool villain, as we say. Um, obviously... Um, smart villain, very intimidating. He's uh, the kind who's uh, all for empowering the people by getting rid of uh, all pressures by just turning them all into monsters. Lots of pressures. Yeah, he's definitely intimidating enough to think, okay, we need to take this person down. And there's something fascinating about his head. Like, okay, you defeat him. Whoa, okay. He's, his brain goes and gets all scrambled. Like, his brain is so big, he has to have this device to like keep it intact. So that's some um, interesting weakness. Um, and there's various ways he uh, tries to outmaneuver everybody and uh, trying to outsmart everybody. I knew you'd do this, so I set up this trap. So obviously, this is uh, if he was a recurring villain, oh boy, that would be something. This is unfortunately the only episode where he gets the spotlight. However, he does come back a number of times. In which case, he made the most of it. Oh, yeah. I fully agree. And fun fact. It might interest you to know, Callum, because I I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you forgot or the fine people at home didn't realize. This character, the leader, he's in the MCU. (laughs) Yeah, I said that. Um, What I said about Abomination is also the leader. Um, 
that guy who was experimenting with the gamma actually got some gamma on him, and then his head got bigger. And everyone had never seen him again. Oh, oh yeah, that guy. He was a character from Holes. I like that movie. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm hoping that with the reveal, uh, with the, like, you know, Abomination is coming back in the She-Hulk show, I'm hoping with him comes the leader. Because, like, dude, that movie came out so long ago. You paid that off now? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Like, you reveal that some of the shit that happened was the leader's plan all along. But, um, yeah, I, I love this guy. I think he's creepy. I think he's cool. I love his stupid mustache. <laughs> I love his stupid head. And I love that for some reason, even though I'm calling him stupid, he scares me, <laughs> which is pretty cool. What do you think, Jack? And then end off with some some of your favorite stuff. Uh, just want to weigh in. The leader is voiced by Jeffrey Combs. Um, he is not in I Have No Mouth But I Must Scream. He is Ratchet. Really? Yes, he is Ratchet in the Transformers Robots in Disguise from 2016. But where I knew him from, and I'm like, oh, that's great. Uh, he's Herbert West in Reanimator, this old horror movie that I... <laughs> he, he's Herbert West in all the subsequent sequels and stuff. He's an old, like, pulpy actor, so I, th I think he got it more off that. Um, but no, the leader as a character in this, he's fine. I, I didn't think he was... I didn't find him scary, per se. I did think it was a little weird that no one tried punching him yet. And then we see, you know, someone goes to attack him, and then the gamma fied Black Panther jumps in. So we had the Avengers on standby to guard him. Um, he's good. I like, yeah, the way he talks. He sort of, I don't need to rush in the way that I'm talking because I am in control of everything that's going on. He's very, he, he gives off the aura of power. He's, he knows how this is going to play out. I was sure he. It was the same dude. I guess I made a mistake. Huh. At least not on IMDb. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, what did uh, we think about Absorbing Man absorbing the hammer? Because I, I remember you brought up you had some issues with that. I have some issues, too. <laughs> I don't necessarily have issues with it. I just have questions. <laughs> yeah, For yeah. Example, so... Absorbing Man, in the first episode that we meet him in, he's holding the metal spoon, he absorbs the aluminium or whatever metal that spoon was made of, per se. Let's, yeah. He touches the Vegas sign, he absorbs that metal, he touches rock, he becomes rock. But there's one point when he's like climbing out of a crater, and he starts to turn to sand, and he's like, oh, quick, touch touch the metal to solidify again. So I, was not, I wasn't sure, is this like, is it... Like a passive ability? Is it just whenever he touches something? But no, because we see him as a human, so just for whatever reason in episode one of what we watched, he just touched the sand, turned on his power, and started turning to sand. Stupid decision. Um, I... And then here, so absorbing Mjolnir, I'm fine with that. I like when you take a superpower and do something creative and unexpected with it. I like that. But it does make me wonder. Is he just rogue, but he doesn't put people in a coma? I believe could he, could he go up to any of the X-Men and copy their power? So I know I know in the original Hulk movie uh, that he was in, because there is a Hulk movie with this guy in it. Mm. Um, uh, Ang Lee one, I think? Oh, I yeah, so. um, with, um, with Macaulay, no, not, no, 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 um, it, um, Jeff Bridges. No, no, that was Jeff Bridges. That was this guy who was in um, um, ah, I need mean, uh, um, the, the the hammy old guy. Sorry, he was in Tropic I... Thunder. He's in Tropic Thunder. This um, guy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, essentially, like in that one, there is a scene where he absorbs electricity, and I thought that was a reference to the character of Zax. Um. But I I think it's like mostly just materials. Yeah. I don't think he can absorb powers. Like specifically, the hammer is made out of like a dwarf star. Like it is a material. 
But he touches it, and then he starts glowing and crackling with the lightning, though. So, I, is it is it because it's like a godly object and it's just so much power? I mean, I, I have questions. <laughs> if you'll recall, those who wield the hammer wield the power of Thor. I guess this is yeah. kind of him wielding the hammer. <laughs> the I have yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't know if he's worthy to do that though. The moment he would have touched the hammer, he would have been like, ah, I have the pull. <laughs> Well, you gotta remember, Hulk, uh, Thor was holding it at the time, and he just absorbed it. So I think he cheated. I remember his name! I remember his, I remember his name! He, he found Nick a loophole. Nick Yeah, Nolte. the actor. Yeah. Yeah. No, that uh, would have been fun as well, if, as opposed to touching the hammer and getting the power. That would have been a fun as well, he touches it, and it's it, 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 sort of Jafar at the end of Aladdin. It's like, yes, I am, I am an all-powerful genie! You have to stick to the rules. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, uh, I see Thor like fighting Mjolnir on Zolver, and then there's a bit where he's trying to punch him, but then he stops, and then Thor's like, "No, I have power over Mjolnir. Therefore, I have power over you." And I thought, "Wait a minute!" So Thor willingly delayed saving the world to deliberately fight Zolver. No, no. Remember, he had to learn. He had to concentrate on it. Right, Thor, Thor meant to mention here. that he ha he just lets um, absorbing man beat the crap out of him because he's like, okay, I've got to, I've got to concentrate and be able to control you, absorbing man. He's got to like work on it. Absorbing man should not be able to wield Mjolnir. <laughs> he is Mjolnir. Could the hammer lift itself? The answer appears to be yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, if, yeah. if we're learning just now, I think that says a lot about how much the show like, leaves us with so many questions. Comic books. I, I, I <laughs> think this is just a cool moment. Like, they were like, yeah. oh, Thor's gonna kick ass. Nope. <laughs> I love it. I, the... I love seeing him absorb the hammer. I think, it, I think it was a missed opportunity for a joke to have absorbed, absorbed Molnir only to just go plonk on the floor. <laughs> Well, also, the plot reason that that doesn't happen is they have to, like, Thor can't save the day. You have to wait till Hulk gets there to fight the leader. <laughs> like, this is a Hulk episode, you know? It's, it's just a Hulk episode. Yes, Abomination does appear uh, briefly, so yes, we can safely say this is a Hulk episode, yes. <laughs> yeah, and Hulk fights the final boss. Hulk has the best line towards the end. <laughs> um, but did we have anything else we wanted to bring up before we get into the ending? The fact that Hawkeye was talking to Black Widow and then left her in the desert. We're left wondering what would she have looked like when she was contaminated by gamma radiation? Yeah, it was kind of a cold moment from him. I, I've always like thought of Hawkeye as this character who is kind of an asshole, but, like, he's got a good heart. In this moment, he, he kind of denies me all that, where he's like, no, I'm leaving you. <laughs> Although, uh, I... he wasn't killing her, so... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And maybe I, there's I... a bit of compassion in that, because he made the stupid decision of letting her go free, because clearly if someone hulks out, they get bigger, so they would just tear through the ropes, and thus she'd be free... As soon as he left her, I'm like, okay, so she gets away because she holds that. Yeah. <laughs> Thought Although that was a dumb famously, move. Famously, in these couple of episodes, every time you turn your back on back Black Widow, it happens with Hulk, it happens with Clint. Every time you turn your back on her, she shoots you. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised if Clint, like, adapted to that. In fact, we see that he did because during that one scene where they're listening to the radio broadcast, Clint actually pulls it on her and shoots her in the back. Um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he was like, I can't take you with me, and I can't have you fucking around while I'm trying to save the world. So it's not the best course of action, mm -hmm. but I'm going to leave you here. Right, well, we'll find you again later. And well, he I'm does. not going to S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, he can't go to S.H.I.E.L.D., remember? They'll arrest him. And also, like, he's looking for Hulk, and that takes priority over all of his bullshit. Hmm. Saving the world, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 
they make the cure. They fight um, leader. I think. I think the fight specifically with leader was like okay. I like that Hawkeye just jumps to the roof, and leader's like, "Okay, oh, I've just got the mech, you asshole." <laughs> Um, but, you know, obviously the heroes win, Hulk breaks the big antenna, and Leader's head mutates into a big Brussels sprout, and he's just sitting there going, It could have been beautiful. I could have remade the world in our image. You're mutated too, Hulk. Why wouldn't you want the world to be in my image? And Hulk, with the sickest burn I've ever heard in my goddamn life, just goes, Simple. You're ugly. <laughs> Honestly, Hawkeye should have gotten a megaphone arrow out for that. <laughs> Yay! But uh, yeah, episode ends. Everybody's happy, but Abomination is crawling away. Hulk and Hulk rejoins the Avengers. And in the scene, you know how Thor goes, I trust you with my life, Hulk. That's actually the end of an argument, because Thor was kind of the reason Hulk left. The two of them were the only two living at the mansion at the time, the Avengers mansion. And Thor kind of got fed up with Hulk, and Hulk got fed up with Thor, and Hulk just left the team. So him saying, I would give my life for you, that's kind of them ending their feud. Nice. But yes, <laughs> Hawkeye joins the team. They're going to find Black Widow eventually. But in the desert, <laughs> Abomination crawls. And who does he hit the feet of? Baron Zemo. <laughs> and literally Yay! the next episode is Masters of Evil. So what are our final thoughts? What did we think? about Gamma World Part 2 and this whole little story as a whole. Uh, you know, Callum's gone first every time. Callum, what is your rating? Well, despite some very questionable comic book logic, um, I'd say this is a, definitely a fitting finale for this little trilogy, I guess. Um, and uh, everything's wrapped up well. And... Uh, uh, um, some cool moments and mm, f- a few um br- bold moments too. I mean, like that Iron Man gamma radiation. Like, yikes! <laughs> um, it was. Uh, hmm. I could give this an eight, but uh, tempted to give it another seven point five again. That would be three seven point five in a row. I mean, I could give it an eight because it's a finale and it wraps up things well. But then... go with your gut. Do you think it okay. deserves an 8? 7.5, I think. That's okay. I I personally... I think I'm going up to a 9. I... Oh. I love this episode. I love a lot of the scenes in it. I love the banter. I love the cool... Like, deformed Avengers... I loved Thor in this episode specifically. Like, I love how when he's just sitting and conversating with the leader, like he's like he's like buying time for the hammer to come. He's just sitting there and asking, "What is your plan?" And he's learning about this person, and it's cool. <laughs> I I love how human Thor is in this series because like he's trying to understand humanity, and he's getting closer and closer. And then some bullshit happens where someone betrays him or some shit, and he's like, oh, well, I'll never get you, people. (laughs) Thor is great in the show, too. I just love the show. I think a nine is worthy of this episode. However, I think it's only... What was it? (laughs) Worthy is Thor? Worthy is Thor. I think it's only worthy if you view all these episodes as one unit. I think if you view you it is one then i think combined together it's a nine however on its own i'd probably give it another eight 
We could do an overall, but, yeah. our thoughts on these three after as well. Oh, of course. Would you like to go next, Jack? Sure. Uh, I think... I generally like to stick to giving whole numbers. But I did... Did I? I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this one a seven bigger. as well. I'm giving this one a yeah. seven as well. Okay, just to finish my thought, and Falcon and Winter Soldier, I do remember you did a couple halves. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, I agree. The seven's a fine rating. I, I just, I like the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just thought I, I remember, because I, I, I didn't mention it last episode, I assume there's sort of a recurring group throughout this show. Um, I, I, I like the Wrecking Crew's appearance. <laughs> Oh yeah, they They're are very much, very much henchmen in this. But when they run into the big reactor room last episode, and there's the four guys standing there. I'm, oh, okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, no, they are from earlier episodes, I believe. Um, I'm pretty sure they show out throughout. I, I think they're actually in the episode Brooke mentioned where uh, all the Avengers lose their powers. <laughs> And now these, like, easy-to-fight thugs are such a challenge. <laughs> nice. But, um, yeah, I, it's I agree with you. Way. I think seven is worth it. Oh, I didn't mean to say Brooks. My bad. Uh, what is your final rating, Brooks, by the way? Um, yeah, I think that this is a great trilogy. And this last one, I like you, I give it a nine. And I think this show is a great, exceptional kid show. A great, greatly exceptional. Yeah, like, I, I'm really happy that you mentioned, Jack, that, like, watching these episodes made you go, I gotta watch the rest. <laughs> like, this show means a lot to me, and it's kind of underrated, so I'd love more I hear you, amen. Them. Amen. But, um, sort of going into the end of the show here, as you can see, we didn't do Cher's um, ending. We didn't do Cher's pick this time. And next time, we will be doing Jack's. We kind of had to change up the schedule to accommodate a couple of things. But that's okay. Jack, I believe, already has his pick ready. Or or, or do you? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Nice. So we will be following up next week with that. However, for our final question, we're going to do something a little different this time. Hmm. So usually our final question has to to do with what we just reviewed this time it won't and in fact it's gonna have to do with something else coming to disney plus something that got announced today they are doing a muppet version of haunted mansion oh. <laughs> it's got announced it's coming out um it's coming out in october it assumably it will be the first muppet movie to come out since Muppets Most Wanted. It will be exclusively on Disney+. Plus. How are we feeling about this? Because they're also adapting one of the best Disney rides ever, The Haunted Mansion, a movie we've reviewed on the show. Um, I'm wondering how we're feeling about this. Do we think this is a good idea? Do we think this is a bad idea? Do we think it's a waste of potential? Shower me with your opinions. Um, I think Callum should go first. Callum, shower me. I'm getting very nostalgic over that time we talked about Eddie Murphy's Haunted Mansion now. Ooh. I'm not. <laughs> there is one was scene in that movie that is a gorgeous, beautiful scene, and it is just smothered in shit. <laughs> oh, you're telling me that. Like, wait, are the Muppets just basically doing their own new version, or are they literally doing the Eddie Murphy scene, but with Muppets? Here's the thing. We don't know. <laughs> so, it could be, like, a new story that sort of plays on the ride. We could see, like, the Muppets has famous Haunted Mansion characters. Or, <laughs> it could be Eddie Murphy. <laughs> it, it could very... You know much be Kermit playing Eddie Murphy's role. <laughs> no, you know what we need? We need Stanford and Waldorf doing a 
Mystery Science Theater 3000, just watching Eddie Murphy's Haunted Mansion. <laughs> I would watch that. I really would. But they need they need to do a show on Disney Plus that's just MST3K, but it's Statler and Wald- Waldorf. Just I, I, I'm with you. <laughs> Commenter, commenting on the entire Disney Plus library. They, they can do that now. I am Iron Man, and I'm 78, and I need my pills. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I here's the thing. I didn't know I wanted this, but now I want this. <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, you would have asked me yesterday, I would have been like, what? That's weird. And then I would have thought about it, and I would have been like, yeah. <laughs> because here's the thing. There is an actual new Haunted Mansion movie coming out in the distant future. Okay. So maybe this like gets people back into the idea of the ride versus the Eddie Murphy version. I'm just thinking about all the famous characters in the Haunted Mansion and which one of the Muppets could play them. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think Piggy has to be the bride. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who would be uh, uh, Madame Leota. <laughs> I, I, I was picking... Pe- I was pegging Piggy for Madame Leota, but yeah. yeah if Piggy I, is the bride... Well, I, I, th- I, I think... They, they will, I don't think they'll do a remake of the Eddie Murphy one. I feel like they have to do... So, something new with this. I, I'm i also wondering if it's going to be like Muppet Christmas Carol. Because theoretically, if you're right, Jack, this is going to be original story. So could Gonzo be the guy in the ride who has the lantern? And maybe he's the narrator of the story again? I don't know. I, 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 go ahead. I, I could see that. I could honestly see anything come of this. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I hope, little thing for me, with university and campus and stuff being closed because of COVID and stuff, I had hoped to get in and do some puppetry work with the Pepper's Ghost Illusion, which is famously used on the Haunted Mansion ride. So I hope that they do a lot of this in-camera trickery that they can do with the ride they do here. I think Mm. it'd be really cool, depending on the state of, again, COVID, uh, to see if, like, um, what's the rat? Is it Haunted Mansion? Well, if they change up the ride for October to a Muppets version of it, I think it would oh, be I really fun. I, I think there's a lot they can do with this idea. And I'm here for it. I, I'm i trying to peg characters here. <laughs> I think that... I'm trying to cast it. They, the hitchhiking ghosts, one of them's got to be Fozzie. One of yeah. them's got to be like Rizzo. <laughs> and... One of them's got to be Animal. Animal's got to be the one with the big ass beard. Uh, I, I'm just dumbfounded by this. Of all of the things I was expecting, like there were even rumors that there was going to be like a Muppet version of Great Gatsby. So I was expecting <laughs> uh, that <laughs> more than this. <laughs> but significantly <laughs> toned down. Yeah, with the death at the end. You know. <laughs> Muppets can die. <laughs> there is a whole. There's a show on Disney Plus right now where it goes way too much into the life of Muppets, and I learned that Muppets can reproduce and die. <gasps> <Muppet baby>. Yes, <laughs> I am forever damaged. I'll I'll get a tattoo of that on my forehead like Jared Leto. <laughs> Damaged by Muppet Baby. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping honestly that like, here's the thing, when making a haunted mansion movie, I feel like you have to decide: is this going to be scary? Like, is it going to be a spooky movie or is it going to be a funny movie? And I yeah. think here they can kind of play the waters with: is a funny movie the right way to go? Like, they can sort of test it. So I think so this, this is the trial run for when they do the actual one down the line. Well, it's also like kind of fitting. Like the idea of a Muppet movie about the haunted mansion kind of makes sense because it's it's full of these characters that just pop up through the story. They're iconic. You'll recognize them when the Muppets dress up as them. 
but also there like even though the haunted mansion has like hidden plot and stuff it doesn't have one main story so i think the muppets sort of being jokey could provide like a little bit of that and if there was anyone out there who didn't know what the haunted mansion was maybe having this come out first will like reinvigorate it yeah. Again, I don't know. This could be a terrible idea, but I'm super hopeful. Anything to add, Brooks or Cal, before we uh, plug I in? Have and... Go ahead and add. This, the Haunted Mansion terrified me as a child. I really got so scared of it. And now, seeing a Muppet Haunted Mansion. What next are they going to do? Marvel Muppets? Star Wars Muppets? Or like, you know, anything else that Disney bought? X-Men Muppets? Or like, like, go get creative. X-Muppets. Like, seriously, I think the M- Muppets are a beloved franchise, but I think they died after their, like, second, like, uh, Muppets Most Wanted. Mm. So or they died the- after the latest movie. Mm. Yeah. I, I am a hoping this kind of brings them back because like say what you want brooks is a little right they've been gone for a while they came back when muppets most wanted but while i didn't hate muppets most wanted i want another muppet movie and if this is how i gotta get it i will absolutely take it and honestly i wanted another haunted mansion movie so i didn't necessarily want to put them together but i'm not complaining we, we got various like muppet shows but uh uh, none of them were too big, although we did get the Muppet Show itself on Disney Plus lately, so it's not as if they were completely gone. I mean, they were completely gone for the longest time before, like, the 2011 Muppets movie mm-hmm. came to us. Thank God, they, they came back with a punch, yeah. Um, so, um... We had fun? What? Yeah. I just Go said we punch. Punched. Okay, right. um, quiet. I, I I thought I heard Brooke say something, but I didn't thought was he trying to finish the statement. Anyway, um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. So, up it's everything. Yes, I I just hope it's good. I I hope this isn't the last we see of the Muppets for a while because, god damn, I love this freaking puppets. I, I too am fascinating, fascinated by uh, puppetry, Jack. So the idea of the Muppets disappearing is nothing less but than tragic to me. So I'd, I'd love, I'd absolutely love to see this work. I think but if um, they do this and it works and it does mm-hmm. well, this won't be the last we see of the Muppets for a while. They'll take this and run with it. I hope so. And honestly, it could be kind of cool to see them do other, like, rides with the Muppets. Like, obviously, Pirates of the Caribbean would be the obvious choice to do after this. But as a whole other discussion, I, I don't think I'd want a Muppets Pirates of the Caribbean. I think I'd want it if it wasn't based on the original Pirates of the Caribbean movie. But then you've, you've already got the alcohol. Muppets Treasure Island. You've already got your Muppets Pirate movie. I don't... Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I don't know. That is a very good Muppets pirate movie. But... Muppets, it's a small world. <laughs> it's like around the world <laughs> in 80 it's days. It's a small world after all. Um, I think imagine all these characters seeing it's a small world after all, yes. But with that question, let's go into plugs. So, everybody plug thyselves. Let's start with Jack. Uh, hi. Yeah, you can find me at Jack of All Trades on YouTube down in the description below, and you can find me at Jack of All Trades on TikTok, or my two sort of big social medias at the moment, so trust they'll be down below on the YouTube. We are currently covering My Hero Academia Season 5 until I finish university, and then I'll have more free time to make more content on that end, and on TikTok as well. It's slowing down a little bit as I focus more on academics, but once I'm in the clear, I've, I've got a bunch of stuff. There's some bad batch ideas I've been knocking around. Ooh, the, the, the stuff on the it. way for these so go, go check me out on them Bad Batch was so good I'll be watching every if you like react or review it I'll be watching every episode bro. I need I'll certainly that. do a full series that. review on the YouTube but more, more like funny animations and stuff on the TikTok that's 
the direction that's heading. Oh, I feel ya. I feel ya. Callum, you're next. Uh, you best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Burner. Uh, you're in one. <laughs> um, God, that was really good. I would kill to see you Kermit as Barbosa. <laughs> I'm, I'm flipping that audio and I'm, I'm doing something with that. I'm... I would actually kill somebody. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> to the back uh, world, Miss Turner. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> All right, plug yourself. Um, so, uh, Cal McCritchie, you can find me at Scotchmeyer on, uh, Stardust. Um, you can find me on Instagram, and, uh, lately I'm also wrapping up academic work, and I'll probably be posting some, uh, of my recent artwork, i.e., a practical exhibition that I did for my pandemic postcards, uh, you know what they are if you follow me. And um, I'll be posting them on my other YouTube channel called Cal McCritchy Art, and as well as Instagram and stuff like that. I also might, may or may not be publishing a new website to showcase my artworks, if you want to check that out soon, yeah. And for my channel, I've, I think I'll have more time to get on with other things. Some animations would be great to get back into, although currently I'm planning on making a video called I Watched Nomad Land So You Don't Have To. All right, I'm excited to see that. Um, Squid, you got anything to plug? Well, I haven't been on YouTube in a while, but I have a project coming up, and maybe in the future, I would show some previews of that project on my YouTube channel. Nice. Uh, what is that YouTube channel? You might want to say it. Um, Squid Bear, just Squid Bear. Might change it to Squid Bear. I mean, I don't know how to change it to Squid Wolf, but I will one day. I can show you how to change it later. <laughs> link link is in the description. Check them out there. <laughs> and also, I'm on um, Stardust, and it's um, Squid Jedi. Check me out there. Alrighty. And, of course, you can find me here on this lovely channel or Twitch. Um, I've been streaming to Twitch more and more, so if you want the live stuff, you got to go there. However, we are about to cover Resident Evil 8. I just... Uh, Showed off some nice art from Instagram for that. Um, and that will be uploaded to YouTube. So just stick around here. And you can see that fantastic art of me as the big, beautiful vampire lady that the internet's in love with. <laughs> and my friend Callum has, my friend Skylar has her wolf brother as we cover the series. So please stick around here and go over to Twitch. And yeah, so now we gotta end on a joke. Uh, uh, what you buying there? <laughs> what am I buying, Kermit? Do you uh, that know? Was, yeah, resident, that's a Resident Evil reference. Yeah, that that kind of ruins the joke now. But uh, <laughs> things have been going downhill ever since pe people have been comparing me to uh, Jordan Peterson. He and I have sound a lot alike. Well, you see, the Ker Kermit, the t twist here is. I'm actually not buying anything. I'm stealing things. And you will remember today as the day you almost caught Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Jack, wow. We turned him off. <laughs> I don't know what voice I was trying to do here. I think I was trying to be Scooter. <laughs> hey, was Scooter Chris is walking on... Was it Christopher Walken on the show? Christopher Walken? <laughs> 